Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I will be giving y'all my January wrap up. So in total, I read 12 books in the month of January, which is amazing. I think it's been a little while since I've read these many books, but to be honest, they were mostly audiobooks. If y'all didn't know, I am currently not in school right now. I decided to take a semester off and transfer to another school in the fall just because the school that I was currently at was not really my cup of tea. So I am taking a semester off and working full time now. Well, actually two part-time jobs. So I'm currently working two jobs plus babysitting on the side. So I'm quite busy. So I do a lot of driving actually to get from point A to point B in both of my lines of work. So I listened to quite a lot of audiobooks. Out of the 12 books that I read in January, nine of them were audiobooks. <laughs> I normally don't listen to this many audiobooks because I can't afford it. Like I have Audible when I get a cre uh, like one credit each month and that's how I basically used to listen to audiobooks or if they were free on YouTube, like I would do that. But then I realized YouTube, you can't really do a good quality double speed because I love to listen double speed. And if you try to do double speed on YouTube, like the sound quality, is really bad so I didn't really enjoy doing that and then one of my family friends introduced the app Libby to me it's kind of like overdrive it's like an app that connects to your library that's close to you um and so like you get like a electronic library card and that's how you do that and you can get ebooks and audiobooks and I am loving that <laughs> I downloaded so many books in the month of January I'm like in love with Libby it's not a sponsor thing whatsoever I'm just telling y'all about this amazing app but other than the audiobooks I listened to I read one ebook and two physical books and so I would tell y'all about all those right now and again from now on for my wrap-ups I'm deciding to go from least favorite to favorite so I'm gonna start out with my least favorite read of the month which wasn't that bad every book that I read was either a three star or higher and a lot of them were five stars so I think that was a great reading month for me so the first read of January is number 12 we have Guardian by Emmy Chandler this is the first book in the Prison Planet series and it's like a companion series, so you don't really need to read them in order. And I gave it a 3.75 stars. I listened to this on Audible. And I listened to this while I was on vacation at the beginning of the year. And I really enjoyed it. I thought the narrators were amazing. So in this book, we um, have inhabited other planets like Earth has. And so when someone has committed a crime, they are sent to a prison planet. And so our main character, Audra, has found herself being sent to a prison planet. You figure out later in the novel why, but basically there are different zones on this prison planet and she gets sent to zone four, where in order for women to survive there, they have to pick a guardian. And the deal is simple if barbaric. Sex in exchange for food and safety from the other 200 men in zone four, which is... Disgusting. Basically, for these women to survive in zone four, there are a limited amount of women, maybe like eight women out of like 200 men in this zone. Once a month, they have to pick a guardian to take care of them and has the responsibility to feed them, give them shelter, but they have to also do whatever this guardian tells them to do. It's a double-edged sword. You have to pick a guardian that is strong enough to protect you from other men because other men can steal you. You have to pick a strong enough man, but it can be inferred the stronger the man, the more force he will basically put on you, essentially rape, which is disgusting. It's kind of a lose-lose situation for these women, which is horrible. So basically our main character, Audra, is in this situation trying to pick out a guardian for the first time. She spots our other main character, Tyson, and she sees him in the crowd and he's really strong and scarred up. And she's like, I think that guy I can protect me. He may put himself, force himself on me, but you know what? I think I can stick up for myself. I think I can do it. And so she picks him and turns out he's not as savage as the other men. But since they have to pick a guardian every 30 days, they're kind of racing against the clock to be together because Audra and Tyson start having feelings for each other actually. And once the 30 days are up, Tyson has to decide what he's going to do since he's basically in love with this woman. And that wasn't a spoiler. That was all in the summary, by the way. I really enjoyed this book. I just found it a little too uh, graphic for my taste. The barbaricness for, like in this book isn't really my cup of tea, but I thought it was a great story nonetheless. Number 11 is another audiobook. We have Beneath This Mask by Megan March. This is the first book in the Beneath 
companion series so you don't have to read them in order or all together to read this series and I also gave this one a 3.75 out of 5 stars and I listened to the audiobook as I said before. Basically we have our main character Charlie and she's been on the run for like a year to escape her father's horrible past that she's been roped into. Her father is known for being this horrible smuggler billionaire and she ends up escaping that lifestyle and her life. She dyes her hair black. She gets tattoos all over her body. She gets piercings. Like she changes her whole appearance and moves to New Orleans, hopefully to start a new life for herself all on her own. She had to change her name because she's famous in almost a bad way. So she had to change everything about her so no one could recognize her at all, live in the shadows. But then she meets Simon, who is the son of an important New Orleans politician. It's her wondering if she should tell him her secrets or not because she also doesn't want to be put in the limelight because he's so famous. She can't ever be with him in public. And it's just her struggling with that. I actually really enjoy this audiobook. I thought the narrators did an amazing job. One of the narrators was one of the narrators for my favorite uh, book that I read this month. And she did an amazing job in this one as well. The guy main character has like a New Orleans accent a little bit. So I thought that was interesting to listen to. The main issue that I kind of had with this is that it was a little bit too insta lovey for me. I don't know, like he kind of sees her and he's like, oh my God. God, you're the most beautiful woman in the world like I have to have you I don't think that's all realistic in my opinion but nonetheless I really enjoyed this book and I really love the New Orleans atmosphere and everything like that and it was interesting to read about Charlie's inner struggles in her mind like wondering whether she should tell all of her secrets to this man that she could be falling for number 10 on this list is an enchantment of ravens by Margaret Rogerson this was, I believe, my second read of the year, if I'm correct. Basically, this whole book takes place in, like, a fairy-esque land. There are humans and fae. They're called fair folk in this book. Fair folk are not able to do, like, creative things like they're not able to cook to draw to paint to build things they're not able to do craft and if they do they can essentially blow up and die so our main character's name is Isabel and she is a mortal and her craft is painting she paints portraits for fair folk one day um Rook the autumn prince who's kind of like been in hiding for a really long time no one's ever really seen him comes to her with a proposition to paint him and she does and she kind of like forms this infatuation with him while she's painting him. But after the whole painting session is done and her painting shipped off to Rook, he comes back and basically takes her back to his kingdom to serve her crime because she painted human sorrow in his eyes, which is kind of showing a weakness for him in his kingdom that he lives in. He's taken her back to his kingdom to try and serve her penance for betraying him and basically making him look weak when in reality she wasn't she was just painting what she saw and it's like the repercussions of that and their journey to the autumn court and everything like that this is very Akatar Aquatic Thorns and Roses-esque kind of reminded me a lot of it this is a YA fantasy if you didn't know it's actually quite short I think that was one of my main issues with it is um we didn't get all that much world building in this book, I would have loved more world building and I think it could have been way longer in my opinion. Like, I don't even know the names of all the courts. Like, I don't know the names of all of the princes of all the courts, you know what I mean? I thought this book was just way too insta lovey for me. She basically becomes infatuated with him just by looking at him for painting him. I didn't see how or why they had feelings for each other at all. Like, it just said they did. Like, why do you like this person? Why are you loving this person? Like, what made you feel? feel that way. I didn't get that at all in this book. I also would have loved a longer conclusion. I thought it was very abrupt in my opinion, but I really loved learning about the fair folk. I love learning about Faye, so I really enjoyed that. And I really loved Mark Rogerson's writing style. I thought it was whimsical, elegant. I really, really loved it. And so I ended up giving this book a four out of five stars. Okay, so number nine through seven is a trilogy. We have the Mount Trilogy by Megan March. The first book being Ruthless King by Megan March. Um, this book actually is a three star, so it should have been technically like the first book on this list, but the series gets better and better. I'm getting this whole series like number nine through seven spot because it just got better and better and better. But yes, I gave this first book a three out of five stars and I'll tell you all why after I tell you the summary, but it gets better 
as the series goes on. I wasn't expecting it to, but it did. And I listened to this on audiobook. The narrator is fantastic. And we have our two main characters, Mount and Kira. Kira is the owner of a whiskey business on the brink of success in New Orleans. She's just getting over her the loss of her cheating ex-husband who died in a car crash. And then a man named Mount, who basically owns the city of New Orleans, um, comes to Kira stating that her dead vindictive husband owes him quite a sum of money. But Kira doesn't seem to have the money that um, will clear her husband's debt, but Mount doesn't want her money. He wants her. Um, I know that summary sounded like a little bit weird. I thought this book was a little bit weird. I first downloaded this book because it was like one of the only books that was ready to download on the Libby app that I was talking about. So I was like, you know what? I'm doing a puzzle. I just want to listen to something. I'll just download this romance book. Like, whatever I may not like it. There are some very cringy aspects to it. Uh, the first book I was like oh, it's gonna just be a mediocre series I'm not gonna really like but next books are also available to download so like I have nothing else to listen to so let's just do that. Um, So yeah I finished the first book and just thought of it as like a typical alpha male billionaire book but it gets way better as the series goes on. Basically they go through a lot together. I've never really read a romance book that goes through different books like it's a series or a trilogy. I've only really read romance books where it's like one book or a companion series or like basically the couple wraps up in the first book. That's not what happened in this one. Mountain Kira's story spans over three books. The second book is called Defiant Queen. I gave that one four stars. I saw it getting better. Then the last book um, is Sinful Empire which I gave five stars to. I really loved it. <laughs> um, they go through so much crap and I loved it. That's honestly why I love the last book is because through all the books like they went through so much together and it was I thought it was great. The first book may not be that great but it just it gets better and better and better and this is the same author who wrote that um, other New Orleans audiobook that I talked about earlier and I just think she's an amazing romance writer. This book also had great narrators by the way. Just want to put that out there. <laughs> Number six on this list is Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. Basically this is about our main character Alosa who is a 17 year old pirate captain. She pirates a ship of women. Her father has given her the task to purposefully be kidnapped by these pirates to sneak onto their ship and like find a key that her father really wants or part of a scroll that her father really wants. And so it's basically the story of her trying to find this missing piece of a puzzle and trying to not seem like she's purposefully there. And she meets a man named Raiden who is the first mate who she might be having feelings for. And I just thought it was a very enjoyable piratey read. I really loved Delosa's character. I thought she was a very unique character and like brought me back to kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean feelings and I love Pirates of the Caribbean so much. Um, and I gave this one a four out of five stars. The next book was also an audiobook and it's called My Oxford Year by Julio Whelan. This is about our main character Ella who goes to Oxford to study abroad for a year for grad school but her first day there she almost gets run over by a smart mouthed local. She later finds out that her literature class is taught by that same man named Jamie and it's the repercussions of that. This is a strange book because you're kind of told this summary that I just told you but then it goes way beyond that, if that makes sense. I feel like this book doesn't have that great of ratings on Goodreads because people were expecting something from this book and they were giving something totally different and was not expecting it, which I actually really loved. I wasn't expecting it to go that deep into something and I actually really loved it. The audiobook was amazing and I gave this book a five out of five stars because of a, a lot of reasons. Um, I don't feel like a lot of people gave this book five out of five stars, which I don't know why I really really loved it. Um, I loved the Oxford European setting. It like sucked me into where like I felt like I was actually there. I've never been there so it was really cool to read about something like that. This isn't just an adult romance book. It delves into life and how someone is supposed to and should live their life and I thought it was amazing. It touched my heart and soul. This book was fantastic. I don't know why more people haven't rated it that great. I don't understand <laughs> unpopular opinion I guess but I really loved it and yeah I gave it a five out of five stars. Okay so we're coming on to the last group of this section my number one spot technically four through one but that's a whole series. My favorite reads of the year 
were a whole series and that is the royally series by Emma Chase my good friend Ashley from Ash Heart Books introduced this series to me and I'm very very grateful for that because I loved these books so much. I know it says I have four spots on here. I read like a novella ebook, so that's why that's not on here. And that was my ebook of the month. So basically, if we're gonna go in order, we have number one, Royally Screwed. Number two is Royally Matched. The novella that I believe you're supposed to read as number three is called Royally Raised. Um, that was just a little novella. It was only 35 pages. I gave that one four stars when I gave the rest of the series five stars. Um, I didn't really think it was all that necessary, but I kind of enjoyed the little tidbits, the little kind of information that we got in that book. And the last book is Royally Endowed. Okay, so I know these books, like the titles sound like a little bit weird and maybe a little bit too steamy, but like, yes, these books have like some steam to it, but like, it's so much more than that. <laughs> this is a adult romance series all involving royalty. One of my new favorite tropes in a uh, romance, royalty romance books. <laughs> I'll tell you what this first book is about just off the bat. Basically, we have Nicholas Pembroke, who is the crowned prince of Wesco. Wesco isn't a real country. It's basically, I kind of think of it as like Genovia from like the Princess Diaries. <laughs> He's charming, handsome, and arrogant. Nicholas is quite used to women throwing themselves at him and people bowing down to him. Then one night when he visits Manhattan, he meets a beautiful woman who doesn't fall at her feet for him. Instead, she throws a pie in his face. <laughs> Needless to say, this woman catches Nicholas's attention and this woman's name is Olivia Hammond and she runs a bakery coffee shop in Manhattan. It's her trying to deal with this man who will not stop pursuing her and her trying to deal with the inner workings of what being with a crown prince means and what she has to deal with. And I loved this book so much. The audiobook was fan freaking tastic. I totally recommend this audiobook. Originally, I listened to this series on Libby. Um, I hadn't even started the third book yet and I already ordered all of the books. <laughs> I needed them in my life. I think this is my favorite book of the year so far, series. Actually, this isn't my favorite one. The next book in the series is my favorite book of the series, but I'll get to that. But um, this series is probably one of my new favorites of all time, just so you know. My favorite book in the entire series was Royally Matched, the second book in the whole series. We have Henry, who is the brother to Prince Nicholas from the first book. It takes place after the repercussions of Royally Screwed because a bomb is dropped at the end of that book. And so it's just like the repercussions of Henry, what Henry has to go through after everything. This is my favorite book in the series for many reasons. This is kind of like bachelor-esque, royal bachelor. Henry is kind of like a partier. He um, likes to party and everything and basically to rebel against his grandmother, who's the queen. He decides to sign up for basically the Bachelor Royal Edition and he's the Bachelor and he has rich, eligible young ladies vying for his heart on this competition TV show and turns out he ends up falling for none of the girls in the show but one of their sisters who accompanies her and uh, her name's Sarah and uh, she's literally me. I'm not kidding, <laughs> she's me. <laughs> I feel like I am Sarah down to her mannerisms her anxiety, her dreams. Like, I love her so much because I feel like she's me. That's why I love this book a lot. And the last book in the series is Royally Endowed by Emma Chase. This is all about um, Olivia, who is the main character girl in the first book. It's about her sister, Ellie, and her love interest, who happens to be a bodyguard for the prince. It's so good. <laughs> This one is kind of interesting for me because it takes place over years and years and years because in the first book Ellie is 17 But then like the story doesn't really pick up the romance doesn't pick up until she turns I want to say 24 or 22 because he's quite older than her and I just I really love this book a lot This whole series was just fantastic. And I totally recommend it if you're into romance books one of my faves of all time <laughs> Anyways, here you have it. Here are some of the books that I read in January. These are all the physical ones anyway. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. I really hope some of you plan to read the Royally series because I love them a lot. <laughs> Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all soon with a new video. Bye!